All right, I think we're live. Welcome back. Um, we're going to do something a little bit different tonight. Um, I usually focus on home audio, mainly uh, Klipsch and Sunfire. Uh, today we're going to look at car audio, um, something a little different. Um, I also have repaired, you know, numerous car audio amps, marine amps, uh, you know, anything vehicle related. I've also repaired as long as it's audio. So um, let's take a look at this kicker hideaway. Now, I already started playing around with this. Um, I wasn't planning on making a video of it, and I, you know, I'm already down here, so I figured why not just turn the camera on and uh, go over this. So, um, these amps have a problem, and the or these speakers, I guess it's it's an all-in-one. These sub subs have a problem. Um, the problem is the design of the speaker the driver as um, it's actually called so uh, I took the back cover off just uses some uh, M4 customized screws that's pretty easy I'm cutting the speaker out I'm just taking the wires and snipping them right off snip them as close to the uh, terminals as possible and um, I, I, I've I don't know I've worked on probably 80 of these the amp is never bad it's almost Never the amp. I think I've seen one that, you know, had like a loose connection or something weird on it, but it was still fixable. The problem is always the driver. So I reached out to a Chinese company and I had this. And we'll get into this in a little bit. So first thing I'm going to do is take the uh, amp out. And that's pretty straightforward and easy to do. you got to be a little careful. Um, there is some foam in here that forms the seal. Just gotta very gently peel that up, and there's also like a big O-ring that seals the box as well. If you tear it, that's okay. You know, it, it's it's not the end of the world. But tr try not to rip it. Um, everything in here is hot glued, which I find kind of funny. I usually peel the hot glue out because hot glue tends to rattle when it breaks off. So. Peel the hot glue off that you can find, throw it away. This um, little woofer foam here, you can um, leave it in, but it's easier to work on if you take it out. So, acoustic foam. This one's only glued in one spot. Again, you know, take the glue out. Who cares if the foam is in there? You know, even if the foam touches the driver, it isn't going to hurt it get rid of the glue. Um, we have one zip tie to cut back here that holds some wires in place. Snip. Throw that out and a couple of screws. There's three screws that hold the amp in. And there are going to be two screws that hold the preamp in. And the preamp is this here. So we will take that out. Again, you know, be kind of careful of the gaskets. If you uh, damage them, it's not the end of the world. Now, the side that doesn't have the little ring terminal on it gets this washer that goes over here. Here's a little red washer. So don't lose the red washer. And then the whole thing just lifts up and lifts out. That's it. That's the, the preamp and the speaker. Now there is, um, these are the MOSFETs f for the output. And there's um, like a little piece of mica insulation in here with some thermal goop on it. You know, try to leave that alone. I'll just respread the thermal goop when it's time to put that back in. There's six screws. Actually, there's eight screws. They're kind of a pain to get out because I believe they put some kind of goop in there. Either that or the... They're not self-tapping screws, but that doesn't mean that they didn't just drive the screws into an aluminum hole. 
So we're going to take the screws out. Now this this uh, driver actually still does work, but it's intermittent. So I'm going to take pleasure in destroying this to show everybody what uh, is actually going on. It doesn't really do me any good damage, so I might as well you know, just gut it and show everybody what's going on. Good forearm workout working on speakers. Now these drivers are not easy to get out. They cover them in this black rubberized glue. And I don't know why. Um, they have a pretty nice rubber uh, surround on them and that should make a really good seal. But what you gotta do is I have this, it's like a carpet blade on my X-Acto knife. And just all around the speaker and there, it's not an even surface, so you gotta, you know, there's like castings in there, so you kind of gotta feel the aluminum and and work around it. But we're gonna do our best. Some of this stuff goes pretty deep. You don't really need to go all the way down to the bottom. But we're gonna do our best to cut all the way around the driver. Be careful of the little support ribs. Your blade will get hooked on them. Anywhere there's glue. Or silicone or whatever this stuff is. Could be like a silicone. It's It cuts real easy. It's just it's like super strong adhesive. So we're going to cut this side. Alright. Surround is cut. Now, you need a special tool, which I probably do not have down here. Might, might have to take a... Uh, quick little journey upstairs. Nope, here it is. Good old pair of cheap craftsman pliers with uh, the little bent tip on them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spread them out as far as I can and I'm going to get it under the sub and I'm going to start twisting them. And you know, it takes quite a bit of force, but once you get them under there and you break that seal, it pries the speaker right out, or the sub, or the driver, or whatever you want to call it. So, it's an aluminum cone, aluminum dust cap, and, you know, a nice rubber surround. Um, but, and here's the but, the way that they design these... The voice coil is bad, so I'm going to just go ahead and destroy this driver. It's no good anyways. I mean, I'm cutting the surround right now with this. Here, I'll just do it so we can watch. This surround is incredibly thick and hard to cut. This is a sharp blade. So they, they tried to do a good job with this. And it could be a very durable speaker, but... They failed when it came to the tinsel leads. I know some of you are probably crying right now. You're killing a speaker. Killing a good woofer. I've tried to repair these. It's not worth it. So, nice, th really thick aluminum uh, What the hell? You cone. It's not really a cone, though. It's just a flat... Uh, surface, but I mean it's a thick probably like 20, 22 gauge aluminum uh, cone, I guess you do all that. I don't know what you really call it on a flat speaker. Um, we're going to cut, cut the spider. It's got a pretty nice spider in there too. I'm going to snip the tinsel leads. No matter what I do, I get that white 
shit all over me. I can't stop myself from doing it. I'm going to cut the tinsel leads here by the speaker terminals. I do save the speaker terminals because sometimes you need one of those for something and they're hard to find. Granted, I'm just kind of wasting time by doing this, but I figure if I don't show you why they fail, what's the point in showing you how to repair it? So right now I'm just cutting through the spider. Trying not to cut my finger off. one spot all right there we go so you can see the uh, the voice coil here and you can let me zoom in you can see it's even a little burned so you see at the bottom part you know, like it's that nice amber color up here and at the bottom it's it's starting to burn um, the problem with these is The tinsel leads, where they're glued, they run them through the spider. They're flat on the spider, so you can see that. And they're glued to the spider. But they run them right up to the glue joint on the aluminum cap. And this right here is a very high flex area. So what happens is, is that the tinsel leads start to wear out, and they break right here, right at this glue joint where they glue it to the, uh, the cone. So this one is, is shot and burned, and this one over here is, you know, turning brown and starting to burn. So, for whatever reason, I don't know, it must be like the, when the, when you start to lose the uh, conductive path, it must generate more heat. I can't really see it drawing more current, but... For whatever the reason, it, they, they fail right here, right at the joint. So it's a design flaw with the actual driver. So, let's get rid of this. And bring in this right here. This is a custom driver. I reached out to a Chinese speaker manufacturer and I sent him some pictures of the original one and we uh, worked out the details of how I you know wanted a driver and I, I'm pretty sure this is the same exact company that makes these um, you know aside from the cone having a few markings in it they're r they're identical it's an identical speaker um, there are a few things that it does not have which I could not get and maybe it's because, um, you know, there's a patent or whatever reason. But if you look at the bottom of these, they um, they would not do this counter bore in here with the threaded hole. They said they can't do that. So maybe that's because it's exclusive to kicker or um, I don't know. I don't know the reason they, they said they couldn't do that for me. So they can give me a replacement speaker that is identical in shape and size and function it's a 150 watt uh, driver at 1 ohm which I know you're, you're thinking that's crazy something so small would run at 1 ohm but that's how they get an incredible amount of power out of a tiny little um, enclosure. These things actually do pretty well for what they are um, I was impressed with it I used a couple of these on my boat for a while and it worked out good. But um, what I do is I, I line it back up with the original glue holes and the surrounds on them are so good. They have a great rubber seal on them. I don't do anything. I just put them back in there. Screw it down. Now I do, um, I ordered a bunch of these drivers because, um, you know, it was, it was cheaper to... Uh, order a small production run of them so I ordered you know several boxes of these drivers and I've used them to repair a bunch of these and um, 
I'm kind of on the end of all the uh, amps that I have or, or uh, speakers that I have, subs that I have. So um, I'm probably going to post a few of these up for sale, these replacement drivers. Throw them up on eBay or something. If you have one of these and it's damaged, you know, throw something in the comments and let me know that uh, your um, sub isn't working and you need a replacement speaker. And, um, you know, we'll work out some kind of deal and I'll ship you one. But it's a, uh, a good way to, uh, well, I should go over a couple things here. And I already started screwing the speaker in, so I won't tell you. But So I knew what the design flaw was, and I mentioned this to the company. I said, hey, I said, these are going to fail. I said, I, you know, wh what can we do to make this design better so they don't fail? So instead of having woven tinsel leads, we came up with silicone jacketed tinsel leads. So I know that's going to be hard to see. But the tinsel leads that are on the replacement, they're silicone covered and they're free floating. So they even put a little uh, cushion pad down here underneath the uh, terminals to keep them from uh, hitting on the edge of the cone here where they might um, wear through. But they're very flexible and um, they can flex the whole length of travel. So they're not going to fatigue in that corner anymore where they did. It's, it's, it's like a normal speaker now. Um, any time that you have the uh, the spider with integrated leads, you want to have them stitched, not glued. Stitch leads can still kind of float around and move a little bit where the glued ones are just rigid. So as the spider flexes, um, those leads take all the stress in one tiny little area and it, it, it causes them to fail. So this is not just a speaker replacement. It is also a speaker improvement or driver improvement. I don't know which term. Somebody tell me which term to use. Somebody's posted in my chat again links. What is this? I'm not going to read it. I'm going to look at what it is. Distracting me. Uh, it's some kind of bot. All right, whatever. If I don't know what it is, I delete it. If you're from another country and you need that, I'm sorry. So I am going to secure the driver now. And I work in the radial fashion on these. I don't know. There's really no right or wrong way to do it. I just go, you know, one to the uh, right, and then I go across. You could do it in a star pattern, however you want to tighten them, but it's really not that critical. You just want to make sure you get it tightened down and you don't strip these out. If you strip these out, you're going to have a bad day. All right, so that's it. Driver's in. Now I am going to reverse everything that I started here. So I'm going to take some of this thermal crap and redistribute it around the uh, transistors. You don't need a lot of this stuff. They always put way more than you need. It's really annoying because it gets everywhere. And then uh, we're going to slide the preamp and amp back in place. There's little grooves that it goes down into. And these little O-rings, you kind of got to make sure you get them back in there and tucked in the corner. They go underneath the little pads. Just get them in there and out of the way. It doesn't have to be anything super fancy. And these gaskets, you know, you can move them around. If you have some sticking out of the outside of the sub, you can just trim it after you have the case cover back on. 
Now we put our screws back in. need to be screaming tight just tight enough to hold everything together there are gaskets on these things so the gaskets will compress a little bit that's why the screws will keep going down in there screw down the amp board now since I cut the uh, terminals off of the speaker. They, they're soldered on from the factory. They they clip them on and then they, they over solder them. So since I something feels like it's getting pinched under there. Let me take a look here real fast. Make sure we're not pinching a wire. Okay, no, we're good. Doesn't hurt to double check. Just if you th some think something's wrong, take a Take a pause and check it out. Unfortunately, I will not be able to test this because I have no idea where the um, special cable. This uses a Molex Mini Fit Junior uh, plug, and it's a for ten pin. I made a custom cable for it for testing. I have no idea where it is. You know, with reorganizing the basement and moving stuff around, it is missing in action so uh, we'll just do a quick and dirty uh, driver test. I should have did a driver test before to show the how the this sub was intermittent like it would uh, I just clipped power supply leads on here set it to 7 volts and 3 amps max and it wouldn't do nothing but if I shook the the cone a little bit the spider um, tinsel leads would make contact and then the cone would bounce real quick so I knew it was an intermittent problem and as soon as I know that it's that intermittent problem I know exactly what it is and it's always the always the driver So I'm not going to put the uh, fast on connectors in there. What I am going to do is I am just going to solder the leads right to the driver. Uh, we can do inside. We can do. I'm going to do outside for this guy. So we're going to come up through the bottom. And they're nicely marked with orange and black. Uh, silicone so you know which one's positive let's see there do I um I think I am going to go to the inside terminal it's been so long since I've done one of these I can't remember how I wire them just want to make sure that the wires are out of the way and that you get a good solder on them. That's the most important part. doesn't really matter where they are, but I have like some OCD tendencies, so I need everything to be like, in my eyes, perfect. And these wires are a little bit large for these terminals, so you, you know, you kind of got to play with them a little bit to make sure you get them in there with no stray wires like hanging out. So when I do my solder jobs, I, I fold them over so they're touching themselves before the jacket and so they're also contacting the uh, the tab. And then I'll solder the entire thing with lead solder. Of course my soldering iron's not on right now. My bench is a disaster, but that's okay. 
So we're just heating up right now. I can start putting the foam back in on the other side. Getting that ready to go. Again, doesn't have to be fancy, just has to be in there. You can do this side. Well, there is a zip tie that uh, goes in here. That hold, there's like a uh, torrid in there that uh, it's supposed to act as a noise filter. I don't know how good it works, but I'll uh, I'll make them happy and just put the zip tie back on it. I, I really don't think the zip tie does a damn thing, but hey, that's all right. If they had it in there, we'll put one back on it. I guess it keeps the torrid from bouncing around a little bit. I'm not even going to trim it. I'm just going to stuff this. Um, sound dampening material around it. It'll be fine. It will be fine. Alright, now we're going to get this good and hot and we're going to solder it with lead solder because lead solder goes very well with anything subwoofer related. My small little iron is really almost uh, too small for soldering big you know tabs like this but it, it works just heat it up make sure you get the wires real good get the tab real good make sure you get a good joint this is not really detailed or fancy work this is just make it work a little bit on the back there this 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 guy didn't uh didn't really wick it up too good all right now we got a really good almost hold on one more spot all right now we got a really good joint on both terminals we'll let that cool for a second you don't want to move the wires you know right after you've blobbed a massive amount of solder on there and then i'm going to bend them down and tuck them in, and yeah, this is this is how I did it. They used to used to come on the inside of here and run, and the speaker was turned one more set of holes over. So because I snipped the leads off and I needed a little bit of that extra, this is how I run it, like that. Now the only other thing you got to do is because I can't get them to uh, put that hole in there that I need, I just take my cutters and. I just start snipping this guy off carefully because I don't want to damage my cutters. I don't care if I break the plastic. The cutters are worth more than the plastic cap. But I'm just taking my... And I'm working down in like a corkscrew fashion. Just trimming my way down. And you'll see there's a rubber pad on here. That's a vibration dampening pad. So they don't want the the plastic cover on the back vibrate. Now I don't know why they made the bottom metal and the top plastic. <laughs> like, why wouldn't you just make the whole thing metal? Um, maybe this acts a little bit as a resonator. I don't know. I am not sure. But I keep trimming. Try not to do that and shoot a piece of plastic into your eyes. You know, some of you might think, well, oh, you're ruining the speaker. I'm really not, because what I'm about to do makes it probably better than the factory. So trim that down so it's almost flush and lower than the um, the foam the sound dampener. Now what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to get my cock gun. 100% silicone. 100%. Color doesn't really matter. I'm going to put a blob of uh, silicone in there. And what that's going to do, where's my cap? There it is. Is not only is that going to create an airtight seal, it is also going to hold my centerpiece in place as good, if not better, than the screw did. <laughs> I've had to pull a couple of these apart after I've put the blob in there, and it is extremely, extremely difficult to do. forgot to test the darn I'll have to I'll, I'll go look and see if I can find a uh, my tester cable for this I, pr I probably won't be able to so I, the screws are different sizes I believe no they're all the same size all right yeah, so now we just put it back together. And I know how incredibly boring that is, but you know, just bear with me until I get the screws in. I think it looks way cooler with the, the new driver in there. I know it's it's just a, uh, a subwoofer, but... And I got a, a zillion screws in this thing. This is where I should have my my drill with a, the proper bit in it. But we'll do it by hand. It was good, good forearm workout. And I'll retighten all these down after I get them all in there. I also fill in this hole too because I put a warranty sticker over the bottom. That way I know if uh, anybody's tried to tamper with it because they almost always try to stick it. <laughs> Alan through the center so but I fill it up so it's nice and smooth and looks a little more professional than a hack job but this really isn't a hack job I've I've done this and it, it actually is a, a in my opinion a good repair I think it's as good if not better than the factory so put it this way I've never had one of these come back that I've worked on couple more screws and then we'll torque them down and be done. And since I don't have my regular size Allens, I have these little stubby ones. It's a nightmare to get any torque on them. But 45 screws later. What's my time stamp on it? 35 minutes? Yeah, so this is a pretty easy repair you know what you're doing if you don't know what you're doing I guess it would be a difficult repair but that's the whole purpose of making this video to make life easier for all of you that are trying to do this now you're gonna have one extra screw and that's the one that used to go into the driver all right let me put my patented torque wrench on there eh, it's not gonna fit darn it Put my trusty pliers on there. Each one of these does need to be torqued. I should just go get a Allen wrench that's meant to do this. I don't want to go out to the garage though. It's cold out there right now. Just find something I can stick on here and spin. There we go. Paintbrush handle. That'll work. 
At least until it breaks. I can already hear it trying to break. And there it is, it broke. Next. Go back to the pliers. But you want to make sure these screws are tight. You don't want to have an air leak in the box. So I know this is kind of a pain especially since I don't have the right tool, but for the sake of making a quick video, instead of not making a video, this is what you this is what you get. You get what you pay for. So if you're a subscriber, I apologize. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe and like my videos. Let me know if I Helped you fix your sub. I always like to hear, f you know, feedback. All right. A few more. These are pro. Oh, no, they're not. These aren't my good ones. I mean, they're Bohondas. They're still pretty good Allens, but if I destroy these, I won't be terribly sad about it. I got a zillion sets of Allen wrenches. Alright. I think we're on the last one there. Alright. That is good. And you can see that the silicone is blobbed in there. I'm not going to fill the hole in yet. I'll do that later. There you go. Now tell me that doesn't look cool with that silver speaker back there instead of that black one. I think it looks pretty darn neat. It definitely looks factory. It sounds factory. It functions factory, but it's a way better driver. Let me go see if I can find the um, test cable. Hold on real quick. Let me mute you. There we go. I don't know if I was muted or not during that, but I can't find the actual test cable, but I do have some something that we might be able to make work, so let's uh let's see if we can get some sound out of this thing. We want to turn on with DC. We want input level to be low, we want phase at zero, base boost. I don't know, we'll turn it at like 75%, crossover, we'll leave it 120, and the gain we're going to turn way down. And I'm going to take my alligator clips and see if I can power this on. 
So 12 volts is the first two pins. Ground is these. Granted, this is not the way to do this, but we're going to try anyways. I don't even know if I'm making connection. Should be. Let's see if we have a blown fuse. If we have a blown fuse, then no test, because I'm not going into the garage to get a fuse. That thing is really in there. Fuse is good. Alright, let's see if my power supply is set at 12 and a half volts. Gr power and remote are the first two pins. Ground is... Maybe it's these two. Come on, make contact, you bastard. Oh, there it is. Oh, I saw it. Come on. Hey, we have light. All right. The light's supposed to come on blue. I don't have a 10-pin Molex on hand right now. Otherwise, I'd just make a power cable really quick. I'm just trying to uh, trying to do a, like a janky kind of test to see if I can get this thing up and running. Just by shoving alligator clips down in there and touching the pins to the um, Molex connector. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. It did power on for a second, though, which was kind of cool. Alright, I can't get it on. It did spark, though. Let's see. Let me try one more time. You got to make contact with both ground wires and both 12 volts to make it play nice. This is not the right way to do this at all. Yeah, I can, I can get it to come on intermittently for a second, but I can't... You can see the uh, the LED light up, but I can't keep the power on there long enough to keep it turned on. So, all right. I thought I could come up with a tricky little way to get this thing going. But anyways, that is a kicker hideaway restoration repair, um, refurbish, whatever you want to call it. And if you have one of these and you need a replacement driver for it, shoot me a message in the comments and uh, I will see what we can do and you know I'll uh, I'll send them out as long as I have them and when I run out of them I'm not going to order any more um, so if you need one let me know get on the, the list to get one thank you for tuning in um, have a great night and uh, remember to like and subscribe have a good one